Welcome to an entry in our exclusive Three Steps to Gladiator series. We built these guides from the ground up to help players go from zero to Gladiator, even on a spec that they've never played before. Step 1 covers building your character and is essentially everything you need to get started once you hit level 120 on your class of choice. Step 2 builds upon that by preparing you for two of the most important skills to have in Arena. Finally, Step 3 walks you through how to get the best results when entering the Arena. Now, we're excited to announce that throughout December, we'll be bringing you daily releases on the second step in this series for all of the specs that you see on screen right now. So, if you're looking to kickstart your climb to Gladiator on any of these popular specs, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified the moment your guide goes live. And head on over to skillcap.com slash wow if you're interested in checking out the rest of the series along with hundreds of other exclusive BFA guides. Alright, let's get into today's Step 2 release. Enjoy! Hi there, Joe Fernandez here and I'll be going over another step to Gladiator on Windwalker Monks. This is the second step of a three step guide to Gladiator, so make sure you've seen step one of this guide before checking out this step. So step two involves preparing for PvP, which is going over a Windwalker's abilities and how to use them properly in Arena. Firstly, an essential part of playing a Windwalker, or any DPS class for that matter, is to have maximum damage output that your class can do. Your main damage rotation will be number one, Rising Sun Kick, number two, Reverse Harm, number three, Fists of Fury, number four, Whirling Dragon Punch, number five, Blackout Kick, and lastly, number six, Tiger Palm. You want to avoid using Blackout Kick or Tiger Palm twice in a row because of your mastery and due to hit combo. The top four abilities of your rotation will deal your most damage in arenas, usually with Fists of Fury topping damage, especially against Cleave Cobbs, followed by Rising Sun Kick and then Reverse Harm. One important aspect of Reverse Harm is to use it on targets that have lower health, so it does more damage. The higher the heal, the more damage it deals, so not only will you increase the damage aspect of it, but you will in turn gain more healing for you or your partners. A Windwalker has two resources for damage, Energy and Chi, which is very similar to a Rogue's combo points. You gain energy naturally and you will use abilities such as Reverse Harm, Tiger Palm or maybe Vivify with your energy. So most of your damage then comes from spending your Chi. As such, it's important to keep track of your Chi so you know when you can burst properly without the need of generating additional Chi or overcapping on it. For example, if I have 5 Chi, I know that I can do a Fist of Fury which costs 3 Chi into a Rising Sun Kick costing 2 Chi. Getting used to knowing how much Chi is generated through your Tiger Palm and Reverse Harm, as well as the cost of Chi with your other spells, will make it easier for you to deal with your rotation when it comes to standard damage and setting up for burst. When it comes to burst damage, you still want to use your normal rotation by adding either Touch of Death or Storm Earth and Fire at the start of your rotation. This will give you an incredible amount of damage and ideally you'll want to have 5 Chi points ready so you can instantly use your first 4 priority spells in your rotation during these cooldowns. These will also be the times when you want to press any on use effect trinkets to maximize your damage or you can time them with proc trinkets if you have the relevant buff active. For Storm Earth and Fire it increases your damage you deal but in a different way. You create clones that end up dealing more damage than you do so you can use this in a unique way. Using this cooldown to burst knowing that you yourself will get peeled but your images won't can be beneficial in still creating pressure. You can also split your images onto another target either for split pressure or if you can't reach them yourself so you can hit them with your images and still pressure the target of your choice. Another very crucial part to PvP is making the most of your crowd control abilities. Using these abilities well will either solidify getting kills on the enemy team with good CC chains on healers or by saving you or a partner's life with great CC on the enemy team during their kill opportunities. Windwalkers have a ton of crowd control tools which include Paralysis, Fists of Fury, Leg Sweep, Ring of Peace, Disable Root and Grapple Weapon. Paralysis can be used for both offensive and defensive purposes. 
It's great for setting up kills as you can lock an enemy in place, allowing you to reach them and land a stun on them in an attempt to slay them. This is especially great against Restoration Druids, where you can paralysis them outside of bear form in order to stun them out of it and deal increased damage towards them. There will be times where you may have to use this defensively though, to deny enemy teams from getting a clean setup or to reduce as much pressure as possible in devastating goes on you or your teammates. Fists of Fury is a damaging ability and as such will widely be used for it, but you can use it as a form of crowd control either, snaring enemy melee, peeling them from your partners, or utilizing the parry effect to reduce pressure on yourself. The parry effect is perfect when you're certain that big damage is coming your way. You can even use it to parry kidney shots or sharpen blade, thus reducing a ton of pressure on yourself and being able to kite away from most of the damage. Now, leg sweep will be your main tool when playing aggressively, locking targets down when you have good pressure between you and your partner. You'll ideally want to have your big damaging abilities ready in order to force defensive cooldowns every time you make these offensive maneuvers. This will be great for comps where you need offensive momentum in order to win the matchup. Again, you can also use this for defensive reasons, if really needing to live or survive against teams, then peeling multiple targets with a stun is an excellent way to stop them in their path and negate their pressure. Another unique CC utility tool is Ring of Peace. It can be used widely for many different reasons, making it an excellent spell to be familiar with. Most of the time though, you will be using this defensively in order to keep your partners alive. The best way to use this is usually when your partner is stuck in a stun and needs defensive peels against melee DPS. Simply pulling the ring off piece centrally on top of them will make it difficult for them to continue pressuring them unless they use a cooldown like Bladestorm or Cloak of Shadows to continue DPSing them. You can also use it to interrupt important casts that can help towards getting a kill or simply stopping a devastating CC or damage effect, such as Chaos Bolt, from landing on you. Pinning enemies against the wall is a more difficult yet very effective task when confident in your ability to place Ring of Peace. This can be devastating for enemy players to deal with, especially if they have no way of getting out of it. Bear in mind when facing other monk teams, as they will most likely have Ring of Peace too. Being able to Ring of Peace on top of their Ring of Peace can render their one useless, so be mindful with your Ring of Peace usage. It's especially nice when chasing down Mistweavers to simply save your Ring of Peace with their one so you can knock them out of safety and continue pressuring them. Now, Disable on its own is just a snare, however reapplying Disable turns it into a root effect, which is spammable but it does diminish with other root effects. This will be another great tool for peeling enemy melee down, stopping them from reaching your partners and reducing pressure on them. You can even root charges, rolls and wraith walks when timed correctly, making it very powerful in these situations. Last but not least, Grapple Weapon is an excellent tool for peeling all melee DPS apart from Windwalkers and Feral Druids. You will mainly use this in order to remove damage or negate pressure from the enemy melee Again, can use them during stuns so that they don't build pressure in these windows. You can also use it during big cooldowns, reducing its effect by a ton, or preemptively using grapple weapon to avoid important damaging effects, such as kidney shots or sharpened blade. Grapple weapon could also be used offensively against warriors or death knights. Simply pulling off a lot of damage and then disarming them will remove their ability to use die by the sword or death strikes which will usually keep them alive in most situations. Most people don't know, but Crackling Jade Lightning is an ability that can be greatly used as it can knock back enemy melee hitting into it. This ability is ideal against another Windwalker monk, being able to knock them back during Fists of Fury. You can also use it on certain platforms to knock enemy melee down. The way in which you use these abilities will more often depend on the situation or the composition you play and its win conditions against other comps. So for example, if you are playing Windwalker Death Knight and are facing a Wizard Cleave, with a win condition that involves ooming the enemy healer and winning in dampening, then your abilities will be used differently. You'll want to tunnel down one DPS class and gripping the other caster in using the leg sweep defensively every time, locking down both casters, preventing as much damage as possible. 
Maybe you face an enemy Mistweaver Melee Cleave Comp as another Mistweaver Windwalker Melee Cleave Comp, which may warrant your grapple weapon to be used aggressively, disarming Death Knights to have a bigger kill opportunity. You could also use every Ring of Peace aggressively if chasing a Mistweaver to have it every time they use Ring of Peace, thus keeping up the pressure. So make sure when using these abilities it's important to identify your team's win conditions so that you have a general idea of how and when to use your crowd control abilities in order to help win a matchup significantly. Well that's it for step 2 of 3 steps to Gladiator as a Windwalker Monk, preparing for PvP. As always if this guide helped make sure to plus skid it and feel free to leave any comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.